Hello YouTube. This is Tommy and we're doing another board review today. Uh, this time it is the El Tomo Fish by Firewire Surfboards in the LFT construction. This particular board is 5.6 by 19 and a quarter by 2 and 7 16 and comes in at 28.8 liters. I'm 5.8 and 145 pounds. So I'm going to format this a little bit different than my usual videos. I'll put all the surfing up front. Uh, I'm going to talk about how the surfboard rode and then on the tail end we'll talk about the board construction and all that good stuff. Uh, so anyways, the the board at 28.8 liters is on the high end of volume for me in terms of a performance board. Probably considered a good groveler for me. Paddles really well. Uh, catches waves uh, fairly well. Okay, And then one of the things that really surprised me about this board is how stable it felt. Now, maybe it's the quads and I'm running a medium set of performance uh, FCS fins and they're considered the balanced fins, right? Not too rigged back, not too upright. When I do the bottom turn on this board, it's super predictable. I basically get into the bottom turn position and literally it just stays, it drives like it's on tracks. So there's nothing uh, that's going to surprise you uh, in terms of the bottom turn. Even if there's bumps in the wave, it just kind of drives, glides right through it, and then keeps its um, arc. And I think it has to do with the tail, um, the way it is one swallow, but it's kind of the uh, stealth wing fighter where the, the outsides are pulled in. So another factor to this stability is probably the width of the tail. If you compare that to the modern two, you'll see the dramatic difference in the width. Now comparing that to the neck beard, you'll notice they're both pretty wide, except the neck beard comes to a point at the corners. And because it doesn't have that angle, when you're doing a turn, uh, and if you slow a bottom turn down, you'll notice it's always going to be at roughly 20 to 30 degree angle. And at least the board is. And that point is where it's kind of teetering. Whereas the uh, El Tomo, because of that cutout, it literally feels like it's just locked in. Something else to note is how much projection and drive this board has off the bottom. So when you do a bottom turn, it squirts speed. And, you know, a lot of boards do that. And it's important uh, because, again, something and it sounds rather cliche at this point but uh your bottom turn is the most important turn it's kind of sets you up for every other turn so if you don't have speed off the bottom especially in softer weaker waves that i surf um, it's going to be really hard to get your top uh turn done so you push off the bottom and it squirts speed and it allows you to do a top wrap off the lip it gives you the speed yeah it's uh, this board is familiar it's so it's stable predictable and the projection and drive is very familiar and what occurred to me was that this board is basically what i was thinking i wanted in the seaside and i remember thinking i wish rob would release a seaside that was more performance oriented a little bit longer narrower but kept the volume and although they don't look the same they're both dedicated quads they both are swallow with some refinements in the tail they don't have similar bottoms but if you think about the general idea of the contours huge concaves huge double with the spine they're almost the same this one has a channel down the middle but they kind of have concepts that are the same so if you ever thought i want a narrower longer seaside this might be the board now talking about responsiveness, because it's predictable, it is responsive. It does what I think it's going to do, mostly because you know I've surfed the seaside for so long and it's so familiar. This board, to me, has a little bit more drawn out turn, but that's okay because I think if you're an intermediate surfer, that's kind of what you want. You want a drawn out turn, but the the board has enough drive to push you through that turn and i feel like i have to make less effort on this board judging from the surfing I, I like the swing weight of this one as well i just don't get the the release at the top uh as you know that i get from the modern two with the two plus one i don't know if i should do these reviews just talking about this board or trying to do a comparison and, and trying to get people to settle on one 
because uh, it's really hard. I mean, everyone has different styles. Everyone has different preferences. It's so subjective. Now, the one negative thing I did feel was that it, it felt a little uh, stiff, and that's the torsion stiffness, right? Uh, heel to toe. So I talked about the modern two. That one felt like a poly, and I don't know if it had to do with the V and kind of being in the water. Um, this one feels like it's on the water, and it feels as if um, the board doesn't have a lot of bend to it. So with epoxy boards, they are just generally stiffer. Uh, and it's not necessarily a negative thing. I've not seen it really affect my surfing in a negative way, uh, especially in smaller waves. But uh, it's just a different feeling. The average surfer, uh, it's not going to impact you performance-wise, but you definitely do f feel it. So I think this uh, El Tomo fish is a thumbs up for Tomo, thumbs up for Firewire. Uh, it's a great board. It's fun. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it is pretty fast down the line. Um, so, But the only fear now is that when you have a board that's fast, uh, let me back up. So you, ha you, you buy boards um, primarily for two reasons. When you buy a groveler for smaller boards, uh, you want a board that can you know, get a lot of speed and generate speed. You're able to use uh, the design of it to get more speed, right? Aside from wave energy and gravity, uh, you want to be able to apply resistance and force on certain parts of the design features to allow you to gain more speed. Um, so those are grovelers, okay? And now the other uh, end of the spectrum is boards that are you're going to ride in big surf right big hollow punchy waves that you want to be able to control the speed you don't want it to be fast you actually want to slow it down because otherwise if it's going too fast you can't put it on rail there's a lot of things that happen so a board like this that has less rocker uh, is designed with parallel rails it's meant for speed okay and now the fear is as the waves get bigger is that going to hinder the board because now it's going to be harder to set on rail etc so until i get this out on bigger waves um the jury's qu not quite out on that uh, but i do know that for what it was designed smaller waves uh it is an awesome board so firewire puts out this chart and uh, for optimal conditions it says it can hit probably five and a half to six feet now, most of us aren't going to buy this in our performance board range. And our performance board scale isn't the same as what their recommendations probably are. So we tend to ride boards a little bigger, uh, intermediate, advanced, uh, low end, advanced. So I would move this peak a little bit lower and uh, towards the left. So when you buy a bo board that's going to be a little bigger, it's probably going to perform better in weaker waves. But as the waves get more optimal, uh, it'll probably drop off really quick. Now another chart put out by Firewire, and, and please excuse the clarity, it, uh, on their website it's so tiny that it's probably all stretched out here. But anyways, it shows that the, the board has a low entry rocker and a low exit rocker. And then in regards to concaves, it's basically four small concaves within one giant concave. And the three uh, white lines the pinstripes are basically they kind of look like channels they're the raised parts uh, of the bottom and here's a look at it uh, from a photo and out the back it's actually a V so the last thing we're gonna look at is the construction it's in the LFT by Firewire and more or less it's a 1.5 pound EPS uh, sandwiched in a deck skin and uh, it does have a springer which is basically uh, their terminology for the stringer uh, and more or less this is uh, not as strong as the helium boards but it is stronger than a PU and but it does pressure a bit so it will show a little deck wear so I'd like to thank you for tuning in and checking out the review of the El Tomo Fish. I think it's a fantastic board. For me, I would probably take this board along with the Seaside. The Seaside would be for smaller waves, this for slightly bigger, and maybe if I wanted just more performance. Um, I would definitely take it over the Neckbeard. Uh, in terms of the Modern 2, it's a close call. Uh, they both feel so different. One's a quad uh, and stable. The other one is a 2 plus 1 and somewhat squirrely, 
which I also like. So um, I, I would, I'm not going to choose. I have both. So <laughs> I'm going to probably keep both. All right. So again, like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll end this video with just some surf footage of, I believe this was day one. I hear the sounds of your heartbeat. I can hear it now. I can hear it now. I hear the sounds.